All right, so we're going to start thinking about consumer theory. And there are a lot of approaches and places to start consumer theory. Many approaches to consumer theory start with sort of an axiomatic view of preferences and things like that. Yeah, and you can find that, and certainly on the reading list there will be places you can go to find that. Just about any graduate textbook will give you what you need to know. I'm actually going to take a much more practical approach. I'm going to do what most economists, you know, most applied versions of economics are going to start with. I'm going to assume that we start with a utility function. We're going to have a utility function that's defined over a set of goods x1 up to xn. So x1 up to xn represent the quantity the individual is consuming of each of n goods. And for now, and I'll, I'll come back later and, and relax this a little bit, I'll assume that each of these goods is being purchased in a market. Okay? Later, we might want to think about cases where there are goods that aren't purchased in a market. There are goods that are produced at home. There are goods that are purchased in some other way. Or goods that maybe you just have, or you were endowed with, you found, didn't purchase them anyway. So we'll, we'll, we can bring that in. But for now, we'll assume all these goods are purchased in the market. And we're going to assume that you're buying them at prices P1 up to Pn are the prices of each of those goods. And we'll assume that you have, so this is utility. These are the prices. And we'll have your income. And I'm just going to assume your income is M. That's your, that's your income. And for now, I'll just assume all the prices and income are in dollars. They're measured in dollars. And there's another element to the units here. And again, when you're thinking about consumption, you've got to think about the units. So you know, the units have to align between these things. So for example, when we talk about income, you've got to talk about income per unit time, right? So income is your weekly income, it's your monthly income, it's your annual income. Now, it may not matter too much which of those you use, but it determines the units in which X are measured, right? So if M is income per week, then X is going to be consumption per week. Everybody understand that? M is income per year, X is going to be consumption per year. Anybody who come from the physical sciences, remember, always you always check that your units made sense across the two sides of your equations, right? This is the same thing true in economics. The units have to make sense. You'd be amazed at how many people, when they go to do empirical work, forget that they have to use the same units on both sides, right? You got to measure things in the same units. All right. So anyway, now we usually think about this consumer as having a budget constraint. And the budget constraint is the sum from i equals 1 to n of the xi pi less than or equal to your income. That is, you can't spend any more than your income. Now, that doesn't mean you can't borrow and lend. If you're interested in consumption in multiple periods of time, it just means you have to think about this income as encompassing the income over some longer period of time and borrowing and lending and future consumption would be one of these goods that you're buying. Right? You'd have to think about what the prices are. But the basic idea is that you're limited in terms of your choices by your some kind of budget constraint. Okay? Now, in a market economy, we usually think about income as a budget constraint. For Robinson Crusoe on Island, you might start with something more fundamental, like he's got a certain amount of time he has available, and, and that's, his, that's his constraint. And you can go back and forth between one and the other. But for now, let's think about the market economy case. 